Hi there, it's Marlene Hilema from ImageMaven.com. Thank you so much for watching my last video on the intelligent auto mode of the Lumix G9. And I had tons of comments and one of the top comments was people wanted me to do a comparison to the IA mode, intelligent auto versus program mode. So that's what this video is all about, the program mode of Lumix cameras. So whether you have a G9 or an older Lumix camera, it should look very similar to what I'm showing you in this video. All right, let's go. Now, if this does happen to be your first time here, well, thanks for checking me out. I teach photography, photo editing, a little bit of lighting, and I'm a huge fan of Lumix cameras. Please subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. So here we are, we're still in isolation mode. So I haven't been able to go out too much to take photos. Uh, I sometimes take my camera on my daily walks, but it's actually been pretty cold around here. Let me know how it is in your neck of the woods. Anyhow, uh, yeah, so here we are doing more videos about the camera. So this gives me lots of time to do details about some of the things that I didn't get a chance to cover previously. Now this camera is two years old already and people are still buying it. So if you're one of those new Lumix G9 users, well, welcome aboard. And I want to say a special shout out to my G9er fan club. Welcome back G9ers. All right, let's jump into the program mode. First things first, pop it into program mode and let's look into the menus. Okay, to verify that you're in program mode, you can see there's a P right up here. And like we did with the IA mode video, let's pop right into the quick menu. So up here we have our photo style. So right now it's in standard. And if you click on standard, you can see that you have far more choices than we did with the IA mode. With the IA mode, we basically had standard and mono. So if you go into each of the modes, like in this case standard, you can go into the mode and you can actually edit that as well. So before we weren't able to change any of the contrast, saturation, noise reduction, or sharpness settings, but once you're in program mode or any of the other adjustable modes, you can change other settings within the actual photo style, but we'll just leave it at the default for now. Let's go back into our quick menu. You can change your video settings and we have a lot of choices in the video settings here. You can change your aspect ratio and your picture size. And of course you can change it to raw or JPEG or JPEG plus raw. And you could do this in IA plus mode before, but not in the regular standard IA mode. All right, what about focusing? Well, just like in the AI plus mode, you can choose autofocus flexible, autofocus single. And in the case of the program and the aperture priority, shutter priority and manual modes, you do have a choice of the focusing selection area. So, you know, you've got all of these available including tracking and animal body face detection. Uh, I typically leave mine on custom multi. If I pop it back into the AI plus mode, you see that you have the autofocus single, autofocus flexible, but we don't have choices of, as to what focusing method we have. You can change your white balance in program mode and you can choose from all the white balance choices we have. Right now I'm on regular auto white balance if you're shooting outdoors, sunny, cloudy, shade, etc. as well as the custom color temperature and the custom white balance settings that you do with a gray card. You can also change your white balance by using the button on the top of the camera and use the rear dial to change it to whatever setting you'd like to use. And in the intelligent auto mode, we don't have any white balance adjustments, but we do have a cool warm slider that we are able to adjust if we need to tweak it. But we don't have the specific settings that we do in the program mode. In the intelligent auto modes, you're on auto ISO. So in program mode, you have the full range of ISO from 200 to 25600. So that's super high and you can just move it, slide it across to whatever you want. You can also adjust the ISO by pushing the ISO button on the top of the camera and turning the wheel to change the ISO. And you can also in program mode set your limits for your lower and your upper ISO limits. 
And the way to find your upper ISO limit is to do your ISO tolerance test, which I do have in another video. You can also adjust the metering mode using the quick menu. And I like to leave it on multipoint metering, but you can choose whatever works for you. If you're not happy with the f-stop shutter speed combination that the camera gave you, you can just rotate the rear dial and choose a faster or slower shutter speed or larger or smaller f-stop. And this relative exposure will stay the same. In program mode, you can also rotate the front dial to change the relative f-stop and shutter speed. If you want to change your exposure, you can use the exposure compensation and again, use the rear dial to add or subtract light. You can access the exposure compensation menu through the button on the top of the camera as well. As far as the other menus go, you can see that we have uh, lots of things available to us in program mode. In fact, most things are available. If I pop it into IA mode, and go back into the menu, you can see already that we're having gaps and page two and pretty much a lot of the menus on the following pages are also not available. And these mostly have to do with the camera setup. Things like the time lapse and the burst settings are still available as well as your 4K, 6K features. So you might not miss everything in IA mode, but in terms of camera setup, you definitely want to be in some of the other modes if camera setup is important to your photos at the time. So this video I mostly talk about the comparison between program mode and intelligent auto, but program mode acts similarly to aperture priority mode, shutter priority mode, and manual mode with a few exceptions in terms of exposure setup. In those modes, you basically have the same functionality of the camera setup in terms of photo style and video capabilities and picture settings, RAW, JPEG, autofocus and focus modes and things like that, adjusting ISO, white balance, etc. In terms of intelligent auto modes, the camera setup menus are just much more limited and simplified. Well now, there's one more spot on the mode dial which I haven't done a video about yet and that is the creative control mode, so stay tuned for that. All right, so if you have any questions or comments about the program mode, let me know in the comments below and if you have any requests for future videos, let me know there as well. See you next time and please stay safe.